Good morning, guys. It's July 21st, 2023. Uh, just doing a little update on my golf course lawn status. Um, I'm starting to get into a lot of problems now during this uh, mid-month. My uh, real mower is not cutting so well. Um, having some problems on the side. And I've already backlapped this about three, four times. Tighten it. Tighten the reel to bed knife, put the compound on, back lap it, wash it, do the paper cut tests, and still not cutting very well. From here on to here, it's cutting pretty well. I mean, it's it, it, it's very sharp, but we got the blades on the side are pretty dull. And these, these have been sharpened up pretty well with the back lap, but it's just the bed knife that's just not cutting very well. And I don't know if it's because I ran, you know, this is my first time real, my first year of real mowing. And I don't know if it's because when I'm driving along the edge that I'm pushing it too hard and I'm running over that concrete, kind of like bumping it. So that might have caused it to like bend and uh, kind of not be in line with the rest of the blade. So a few options I'm thinking of is either replacing the bed knife or taking it to a machine shop to get it resharpened. But of course, I would want to get their opinion to make sure that this can be resharpened. There's nothing wrong with the reels. Let me repeat that. I mean, the, the reels are extremely sharp now due to the back lapping, but it's just the bed knife is very dull. I can put my finger, when I stick my finger underneath, it's very dull versus uh, like in the middle. I can't really show it here on camera, but if I were to feel that right there, that's super, it's super sharp. Then we get over here, it's very dull, doesn't feel sharp at all. And that's where it's not cutting. And then over here, same thing. This this side's actually a little better, it's sharp here. But, um, yeah, that's my problem. That's my uh, issue that I'm facing right now. So, when I'm mowing, I'm trying to do some stripes. You'll see this this side of the, the stripe's not cutting very well, so I'm having to run over that same section at least twice um, to get in my stripes. So that's kind of my problem right now. And let me give an update on my lawn. Grass has been filling in. Uh, temperatures have been like 100 degrees plus. So I took the height of cut back up to one inch. Uh, the three quarters were a bit too short and it was the lawn started burning up. Uh, started getting some brown spots in the lawn. But for the most part, um, a lot of it's all filled in. I'm still having that problem area in the middle. And there's some areas here. There's just some compacted areas like where the grass isn't growing. And it just seems that, I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's not fluffy like the rest of it. Like you see that over there compared to this. This just looks like it's matted down for some weird reason. I just can't tell. I think it's probably has something to do with what's underneath it. Then over here on this problem side. Grass starting to fill in. I've been watering this pretty much like three to four times a day. Filling it up with sand. Stolons are coming in. You can kind of see the growth here. It's going to take a while. Like I said, I think it's going to probably be mid-August, maybe to the end of August, maybe by the end of the season that this will fill in. That's my goal, is to get this to fill in by, by the end of the season. And then, what else do we got here? Yeah, so, when I was cutting at three quarters, I was starting to get some areas that were turning brown, and that's just from heat stress, because the temperature is being like 100. I think our highest, highest temperature this, uh, this month has been 106 and it's been consistently been that temperature 103 106 pretty much every day we haven't had rain since june so yeah that's gonna pretty much uh, dry up the lawn and then let's go over here to the, the trouble spot i've been watering this probably like three four times a day too and it's just not improving so i took my uh, soil test probe I started poking holes, kind of just like a manual core aeration here. And I did pick up the cores. Cores are perfectly fine. I don't see anything wrong with the soil. I ran into a few rocks, but it's not, I mean, that's, that's normal. Uh, is that... Good evening. 
it is July 31st, 2023. Time for an update. Boy, oh boy, have the temperatures been very hot this month. And we haven't had any rain. We had rain that one time in my last video, which rained for like five, 10 minutes. No, more like 15 minutes. And it was like a sprinkle. And that's pretty much all the rain we got this whole month. So I've been running irrigation like crazy. Temperatures have been 103, 106 uh, consistently. This is probably like the hottest, I think in the news they're saying it's like a record high or definitely a record year of uh, hot weather. So I've been running irrigation a lot. Been uh, watering every Tuesday and Saturday, half inch. I just added a day of Thursday to get a one and a half inch and the coverage is not great. So I'm having to come in and hand water it in the morning. And even then I'm still getting brown spots around the lawn. So it's been, uh, it's been a really rough month. And uh, today I was gonna lay down uh, the double dark 1600. Uh, according to the soil tests, I do need more nitrogen, but you know what? I don't think I'm gonna do it because with no rain in the forecast, it's just too risky. I don't want to burn up the lawn. And I'm supposed to lay my soil amendment essential G along with it, and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna lay essential G, and I'm gonna wait till like mid month of August, maybe August 15th, and see how the temperatures the temperatures should be dropping back down into the 90s. I think at that point, um, it may be safer to go ahead and put the fur down at, at, at that time, but I wouldn't do it right now. I know this whole week is going to be 100. I think today was 108, and it's just now dropping. I mean, it's very hot right now. I'm sweating just videoing this right now, but yeah, 108. Uh, the rest of this week's going to be 103, 106. I think next week's going to be 101, and then supposedly... By the weekend, it'll drop down to like 98, 97. And then the next following week, it'll be like around those temperatures, at least below 100. And it's just, yeah, it's just been way too hot. Again, too many brown spots. I laid hydrotain down my second application uh, last week on Thursday. I just did a three ounce per thousand square foot. Um, it's just a suggestion that they tell you to do you can do one third of the rate uh, monthly. I'm gonna probably do it again in the uh, month of August. But uh, yeah, no fertilization uh, for the beginning of August, at least for now, because it's just way too risky. I don't wanna burn up the lawn. And I mean, even mowing is hurting the lawn. I mean, I'm mowing at one inch and every time I mow, it's like brown, more brown spots are appearing um, during the day. And I'm having to come out here and water those brown spots, but it's not really doing much because I think it's already been damaged by the heat. So definitely uh, I'm gonna change my mowing schedule with it being 100 degrees. I think uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mow in the evening so that it has the whole night to go through staying cool. And um, you know, if irrigation is scheduled to run that, that evening, then that'll help it out too. But yeah, definitely, I don't think mowing in the morning is a good idea just because even though it's even though it's not hot yet, um, you're putting your lawn under stress because it basically has to deal with that uh, morning watering as well. I come in with a hose and at least water this section. I turn irrigation off in this zone. But yeah, that's my update. Uh, August is tomorrow. I'm gonna go I only have one bag of essential G. I did not know that uh, one bag only covers um, I think they said, what, 4,000 square feet? And I got 6,000 square feet I need to cover. I was gonna run it at the same rate as uh, uh, Carbon Pro G. So I think on the spreader settings, I had it already print this out. And I have it set at, let's see. Where do I have it? Here we go. Yeah, so my Carbon Pro G, I've got it set at uh, 15. The central G, it's supposed to be 14 and a half. I'm gonna run it at 14. I think the granules are a lot smaller than Carbon Pro G, so I might have to, I don't know, we'll see. I haven't opened up the bag yet to see what they actually look like, but uh, I want this to cover the whole lawn. And then also having other 
trouble spots too. And I think this may be due to the lack of not uh, applying, spreading the fertilizer correctly, but, or I mean, just not spreading the fertilizer adequately. Uh, it was taking too wide of turns. So that, that spot that, where grass hasn't been growing for the whole month, um, I, I, went, I went in with my uh, soil test uh, probe and started poking holes and taking the cores and removing them and saving them in the bucket. And you can see how like this section of the lawn is basically like not growing grass. So uh, I did that. And then also that spot, the same thing. And uh, I was gonna fertilize, you know, I was gonna try to do a more even application with the fertilization, but since I'm not doing that now, um, we'll have to wait and see if that's the, the culprit of the reason. But um, anyways, I'm gonna lay Essential G, just recording this to document what it looks like. I'm kind of curious and see if there's gonna be any uh, improvements just laying down the soil amendment. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and lay this down. So real quick, I was gonna show what, what the pros look like for the Essential G. Uh, it's a lot similar. It's very similar to the Carbon Pro G. I mean, I don't see very much uh, difference. I see a lot of similarities. I can't quite remember how Carbon Pro G was. I, I know it's Carbon Pro G is a little bit more, kind of more wet and kind of bunched up together. This is more dry. I guess this will spread a lot better. But uh, yeah, um, I'm going to run it at 14. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to cover 6,000 square feet with that amount. Okay, I just made a ring around the perimeter of the, the center lawn. Uh, one thing I did do here, make sure this is closed. Is I did the, uh, you know, that's the edge when you go around the edge so that it doesn't spray so far out into the curve and then through your driveway. Now I'm gonna go full and then I'm gonna go a zigzag pattern, uh, going perpendicular of how I ran it uh, last month when I was going this way. And then. Good evening. It's August 7th, 2023. It's getting close to the end of our uh, summer season for the lawn. And I was just gonna do a little update on what's go been going on. We haven't had any rain since June, believe it or not. And uh, I think a lot, I talked in my last video how uh, it's been stressing out the lawn. I've been not getting enough water. I've been upping up the uh, scheduling for my, uh, my irrigation. And thankfully, uh, there's no water restrictions going on at the moment. So I've been hand watering all the brown spots I could possibly water and turned up irrigation. I'm now, um, uh, was it? I am now pushing it at an inch and a half of water per week. But that that doesn't include the hand watering either. So probably doing probably two inches or so. But the lawn is uh, making a comeback with all that water. I've gotten a lot of sedges growing in the lawn. I need to spray my uh, certainty application soon. It's starting to go crazy. I'm gonna have to blanket uh, spray, spray the entire yard. I'm waiting for temperatures to cool down. We still have probably like another week of 100 degree weather. Today was uh, 104. Yesterday was 106. Over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I believe it was like 108, 106. And basically, lawn's still staying green, still hanging on. Uh, just That's mainly because of the, all the watering I've been doing. But uh, the reason why I made this video today is I was supposed to lay down the uh, Double Dark 1600 uh, for the month of August. And I held off on that and uh, just applied the Essential G. And Essential G actually gave it a little nice kick of green which is pretty cool. But now uh, I actually ordered this that I'm gonna put down tonight, which is the uh, Stress Blend 7020 right here by Yard Mastery. 
It's an 18 pound bag, exactly good enough for 6,000 square feet is what I'm needing to cover tonight. So I'm about to load that up here on my Earthway spreader, run it on the setting of 14. And uh, hopefully uh, it'll help out the lawn for the remaining weeks of 100 degree weather. And then come close to the end of August, I'll probably uh, do the 1600 double dark and then let that run all the way through the, the month of September. Hopefully I can get some more stripe action going for that month. Um, but yeah, let's, I just want to go ahead and put that down. And then I'm going to try to focus on this area, this the right side of this lawn now, because this is the area that was kind of having some challenges as far as uh, greening up those problem spots. So I'm going to be primarily focusing on those areas and uh, spreading it evenly across by going perpendicular to how I was going last time. Last time I was going this way. This time I'm going to go this way. Then I'm going to do some drone footage later in the week, maybe next week, and then see if anything greens up on, on these areas. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that started and then I'll update you guys. Run it at the 14, which is what I got set up right now. Okay. And I've got it closed right now. Let me show you what this granules look like here. Got kind of a Halloween color. Got that orange, black, and gray. But yep, I'm gonna go ahead and spread this around. Alright, I'm gonna run around the perimeter here. Set it over here to the side. And then open it up. And go. I usually do two passes on the when I do the perimeter walk because uh, it doesn't come out as strong and sometimes I miss areas so I'll do it twice on perimeter walk and then when I do the middle sections with a full open I'll just do it at one one pass that turn up there I missed some spots so I want to make sure I, I get it right here there we go All right, close that off and now I'm gonna do the full I'm gonna run across, up and down maybe two times here or I mean uh, back and forth yeah right there open this up and go just going in a straight pattern right now Back up. Oh yeah, now it's coming up. Sometimes you gotta shake it a little bit to get it to come out. I'm gonna go down this way. Just make sure I get my coverage. And go straight this way. Close it. Alright. Let's go over to that section. 
Okay, I was getting a little shady with my uh, application because uh, I've never actually filled up something with just a bag alone that fully covered 6,000 square feet. So I want to carefully make sure that I'm applying it evenly across all the lawn and not. I'm usually used to having extra, so in case if I miss areas, I can come back and redo it. But in this case, I want to make sure that I had evenly applied it. I've already gone through all the sections. I do a what I do is I do a a runner. Also got to blow uh, excess. I can see how the granule is uh, on the driveway. So throw that back into the, uh, the grass here, so I don't waste any of the fertilizer. sure that uh, all the prills go down into the soil because that's the number one thing you need to do after you lay down your fertilizer you need to get it wet water it into the ground I got irrigation set up for uh, tonight 4 a.m. in the middle of the night so um, it'll be running again but of course you know, it's always good to soak it in with the water hose as well so I'm gonna do two of those things and tomorrow uh, I'll be out all day so I won't be able to hand water anything tomorrow. So this is just uh, insurance to make sure that your application gets set down into the soil um, as needed. It's 8.14 and man, it's still hot outside. But, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. So I'm just watering in the fertilizer now by hand. Got irrigation set up, like I said, uh, at four o'clock tonight. But, uh, you know, the coverage ain't so great, so. Watering it by hand is going to help it out, get all the prills uh, soaked into the soil. One thing I have to say about Yard Mastery product, um, I'm not really sure I like the, the pill size of the uh, fertilizer granulars because um, they're a little bit hard to come through on the uh, earthway spreader. Um, I'm noticing that I'm having to push at a certain speed in order to get it to come out. If I'm like, walking at a slow speed, uh, nothing's going to be spinning out. So. It's really the speed of the walk and how fast the uh, little thing inside spins in order to push the granulars out um, into the, uh, you know, the hopper. So, I don't know. I have mixed, mixed feelings about the um, Yard Mastery Pearl size. But I know the product's great. It's just uh, applying it is not so great. And it could just be due to the equipment right but earthway spreader 2050p is actually a pretty good one so um i'm not gonna really blame it on the equipment on this for this particular reason but um i don't know i think when i applied a humid max uh, last month um i actually enjoyed putting that one down because the pill size was really small uh, i can't remember what the SGNs were but definitely a lot smaller much easier to apply um definitely more precise spread i mean depending Seeing exactly where you walk is actually where it's going to be put out. Um, while on this one, you've got to walk at a higher higher rate, higher speed, and it's just flung everywhere. I mean, I had pearls all over the uh, all over the concrete, and I had to um, blow those in. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. Even though I had set that one setting on the the spreader to uh, not shoot out to the left, uh, which makes it basically a smaller hole on one of the uh, dispens dispensary holes. So that it just shoots out to the right and and it shoots out like maybe 50 to 25 percent on the left um, i'm having to do the perimeter walk around twice just because i'm not seeing anything coming out of the hopper um, when i'm doing it so yeah uh, that's just from my experience but you know there's there's techniques and there's ways to always get everything done uh, it's just a matter of learning so I'm, I'm still in the learning stages of um, lawn care so I'm sure I'll get there and figure out uh, a better way to uh, apply it with my with the equipment that I have. But anyways, I'm uh, going to sign out now. I'm just applying, just watering it in. And then uh, we'll see if I see any results uh, in the next uh, few days to a week, maybe next week. And then uh, we'll see if uh, walking the pattern I did actually uh, helps alleviate some of those areas that I've been uh, noticing on this part of the yard 
I'll do a drone shot and then check all that out and see uh, if anything's improved. All right, signing out, guys.